Hi, I'm Marius from Mways Photography, and welcome back to another episode of Digital Photography Today, the show where you will learn how to become the master of your camera. Now, in this week's episode, we are going to quickly discuss the difference in picture quality between, for instance, a bridge camera, like, say, the Canon PowerShot S650HS, we'll use that one as an example, compared to, say, an SLR camera, um, it might be a crop sensor camera, like a D7000 Nikon, or it might be a full-frame camera, like, say, a Canon 5D Mark III or a, a Nikon D800. Okay, so I get a question very often. It's basically the question I get most of the time, is that people send me a mail and they'll, they'll say, Hi, Morris, um, I'm looking at buying this um, SLR camera or this bridge camera. Will this give me good quality? Now, it's not just a yes or no answer. I don't know what you're going to photograph. I don't know what you consider as good quality because what you might, might consider awesome quality for me might be terrible quality. So it's really not just a yes or no answer. I need more information. And I get to the question so often and then it's writing an entire essay and it takes up a lot of time. So what I want to do is, is just give you a little idea as to the difference in the cameras and then give you a very handy website that you can go to to give you a studio comparison between the different cameras. So you can actually choose a bunch of cameras and the website will show you all the different cameras, the same image on the different cameras so you can see what the quality is like. So that's really awesome. Okay, so now the first thing when we look at the difference in the cameras, it's basically going down to, or coming down to the sensor size. So if you look at this image I've got right here, now I just went to Google and typed in sensor sizes and this pops up. So if you want to have this, just go to Google, just type in sensor sizes and you will see a lot of these pop up on your screen and you can see the difference in the size. Now if you look at this one right at the top, you'll see it says 35 millimeter full frame. Now in the old days, your 35 millimeter cameras, this is the size of, that's going to be exactly the same as those 35 millimeter films. Now if you buy a full frame camera, like for instance, say a Canon 5D Mark III or Nikon D800, then this is the size of your sensor. So it's really a pretty large sensor if you compare that to, for instance, say a Canon PowerShot, say the S650Hs, which the sensor size is around about, yeah. So it's going to be around this size. Now, if you look at your, um, say your Nikon D7000 or any of the other Canon crop sensor cameras, your Nikon sensor will be around about, yeah. So it's going to be the same size. You'll see it's the same, uh, or not the same size, the same shape. It's a, it's a two by three ratio, so it's going to be the same shape as this, it's just a lot smaller. And you'll see the Canon one is smaller as well, so here's the, the, the green one here, that's just a little bit smaller, here's the Canon crop sensor. So it's also two by three ratio, it's just a lot smaller. Now obviously if you think about megapixels, now remember one megapixel is one million pixels. So if you have, for instance, say, 16 megapixels and you take 16 megapixels and you put it in here remember it's 16 million pixels on this very tiny sensor and if you compare it to say the Nikon camera here which will also have say 16 megapixels then I would rather have 16 megapixel or 16 million pixels on this which will make the, the pixels or the individual pixels a lot larger with it being on a larger sensor than on this tiny sensor we've got right here. Okay, so obviously that's going to make a difference in your picture quality. Now when you look at the difference between the cameras, it's not just the picture quality. Obviously the focusing will be a lot better if you compare it between an entry level camera like this, like say the SX50, which is only a few hundred dollars, and you compare it to a full frame camera, which is a few thousand dollars obviously you get what you pay for. So your focus on you will be a lot better. Your burst mode will be a lot better. Now picture yourself in a situation. You, you're in the wild and you've, you see this cheetah running after an animal. It's hunting its prey and it's coming uh, past you at an enormous speed. 
and you're trying to focus with the cannon power shot and you're in burst mode and you're going chick, 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 and you're taking pictures of that uh, um, cheetah or leopard or whatever is running after that animal um, and you compare that to someone shooting on say this sensor size also in burst mode much faster zooming much better optical lens quality on that because the, the, the lenses are a few thousand dollars on that you can imagine the image quality the difference you will have on that so you need to ask yourself okay what is my budget that's the first thing what's my budget and what do i want to do if you want to take pictures maybe in the wild and it's just going to be higher this is where i was here's my picture what do you think i think it's pretty cool then most probably a canon power shot will be perfectly fine if you say no i want a picture it looks like it's coming straight out of national geographic or some magazine like that then obviously you will need a full frame sensor like this or a crop sensor camera um, and some proper optics uh, 2.8 lenses to get to that image so again you get what you pay for now it's difficult if you just tell someone that they really want to see the difference in quality so that's what i'm going to show you now now if you go to dp review now this, this is the website dpreview.com you can see it right there it'll open up like this now there's a section on the website which is really very very cool so if you go to sample images and you go down to studio comparison tool you can click on that and it will open up this page it'll allow you to select a few cameras and you can see the difference between those pictures so i'm going to first go to the primary camera and i'm going to choose the sx50 i would have chosen the sx60 here where's now there's the sx50 but i don't have the sx60 on here and then i'm going to choose a large iso um, like 1600 because I want you to see the difference in the larger sensor because the larger sensor handles image noise a lot better so I'm going to set this as being my main camera and then I'm going to this section right here and choose another camera so let's choose say the Nikon D7000 that's going to be my crop sensor camera again with the same ISO also JPEG so we've got something similar then let's choose here, uh, say a Nikon D800. Now this thing has got a much larger sensor and a lot more megapixels. Now usually when you're looking at a small camera, as I've shown in my one review on the, the uh, Canon PowerShot SX60HS, when, when I compared it to the 50, the 50 had better image quality. And it's because they put in more megapixels but on a smaller sensor. So the Nikon D800 has got a 36 megapixels sensor. Now because it's a full frame sensor, it's fine to have 36 megapixels in there. And you will see when I start to zoom in, the image quality, you can see the difference. Okay, so now we can see a smaller image here. And we can also move this block around and choose, for instance, if I go to this map right here, or this, or this um, globe, you can immediately see here's the SX50. Um, look at that compared to, for instance, the D7000 compared to the D800. You can immediately see the difference in image quality. Now, I've already downloaded these images, so I can show you the high-res ones. So I've already downloaded the full image. You can even download the full image. It's really very cool. So I'm going to open those images now. So here's the image of the SX50. And if I go to full screen view and look at it 100%, this is the quality that we have on the SX50. Now, if you look at the detail on this coin right here, I will compare it soon to the D800 and you'll see the big difference. If you look at the small text, look at the small text, all the lines here, um, look at the batteries here. All the text is very fuzzy because it's not a very large sensor. It doesn't have a lot of megapixels. Um, you can't expect the same quality from that full frame sensor that you would get on a full frame sensor like the D800. Now here's the D7000 and if you look at it it's already starting to look a lot better. Look at the detail there on the coin, look at the text there, look at the lines, This these text here is already starting to look better. There's a lot more detail here on this battery. You can already read the proper Irigana characters there. It's starting to look a lot better. Now if I go to the D800 this is where you really start to see a uh, big difference so here's the d800 uh, where is that coin now just look at that detail look at the text yeah it's crisp 
Look at the texture on the battery. It's crisp. So this is what I consider excellent image quality. So you might be looking at something like this and then you're asking me, okay, will the D7000 be sufficient or would a PowerShot give me this? If I don't know what you consider excellent image quality, then I can't really give you that, uh, uh, I can't really give you a comment on it. I can't answer that question for you. So this site is really awesome for you to quickly look up on the image quality of something and decide for yourself if the image quality is good. Now I'm going to put these two next to each other. So here's the D800. I'm going to close the D7000 and I'm going to leave these two open. So we get a really big difference between the two. So here's the SX50. I will open it up to full size. Here's the D800. So if I go to that globe for instance, there's the globe and there's a D800. I just look at all the small text. I can perfectly read on this compared to that. If we look at, like for instance here, look at all the fine lines. Look at all the fine lines right there compared to there. There we don't even see it anymore. Look at the detail on the coin. The D800 has got a lot more quality. But now I need to ask myself, or you need to ask yourself, when you, when you look at this and decide which camera you want to buy, is this sufficient for me? Remember, th having these many megapixels are going to be great for doing studio work and printing large banners, but if that's not your, your scene, if that's not what you're going to be doing, then this camera might be sufficient. Um, having maybe a D7000 might be sufficient. Um, we, we can compare those two right now, but if we look at, for instance, this battery right here, the D800 has obviously got a lot more quality here than on the SX50HS, like I said, a few hundred dollars compared to a few thousand dollars. Big difference. Um, I'm going to open that D7000 again. If you compare the two SLR cameras to get together and we look at having 16 megapixel compared to 36 megapixel and also a crop sensor compared to a full frame sensor, if you look there, for most people this will be perfectly sufficient. Most probably if you have this, you'll have to resize your pictures to print them smaller because you've got all this amount of extra resolution which you're not really going to use. So that's why I'm, why I'm saying when you want to ask that question, first ask yourself, what is my budget? How much do I want to spend? What will I be doing with these pictures? If I was doing only studio work and banners and large prints for corporate clients, then this is what I would want and not this because I will get a lot more quality from this. But if I'm only printing A4 and A3 prints for myself, it's just a hobby, then this will be more than sufficient. I would rather have this camera, like a D7000 or D7100 or something like that, and spend my money on proper lenses, and rather invest in the lenses than in the camera body. That will save you a lot of money as well. So this is something you really need to look at when you decide or make that decision on what will be considered good enough. If you look at these two images, making an A3 print between these two, you will get just as good quality image from this than from this. And you can get a D7000 refurbished for a few hundred dollars. A new one will still be less than a thousand dollars to buy that. So this really makes it very easy to decide when you buy the camera what will be considered good enough for you. So really go to this website. It's called DP Review. So go back here. It's called DP Review. And you can open a ton of cameras here and look at the image quality of them all. It will really give you a very good indication if the camera will be good enough for you or not. Okay, now that's that for this week's episode. If you have enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Click that subscribe button and get all these awesome episodes as they come out. Okay, now I've got or received a few um, messages already. When is the HDR episode going to be out? Now, currently, it almost feels like I'm getting a flu or something. My voice doesn't sound that great. And I've got a ton of projects I'm currently working on, which is taking up all my time. And it's a bit tricky shooting those HDR videos at the moment. So I will take a break for a few weeks now so that I have time in between to shoot nice HDR videos and then I will load them on YouTube and you will get your, if you're subscribed, you will get your email telling you those videos are online. So yeah, give me a few weeks and then I will be back with the HDR videos and I hope this video really helps you to decide which camera to buy 
or if you will be happy with a crop sensor or a full frame or a bridge camera. I hope this really answers a lot of people's questions. So then I'll see you again on, in the HDR video in a few weeks. Bye.